uh, time till the end of December, January, we'll see, but uh, it will also depend from your um, uh, involvement. Um, uh, <coughs> uh, so uh, this is what we are planning. This is the first one of the uh, uh, of the manner of the webinars which we are planning. Uh, this uh, slide number seven. So the slide number seven tells us that all those objectives uh, we wanted to uh, uh, achieve uh, by uh, access to talents, uh, access to knowledge, access to markets, clients, and the finance. So because of that, we are for European ecosystems. We are rich of experts. Uh, we are open to collaborate. Uh, we have more than 100 vertical experts and international mentors for startups not like you. Uh, we have access to markets uh, thanks to our ecosystems, local ecosystems, uh, potentially access to clients uh, who are the large corporates, public administrations, um, uh, and of course access to finance thanks to the international business angels and venture capital networks. Uh, Shortly, uh, those actions are via the co-learning, co-living, and co-working. Uh, so, list offers to startups coming from those four different ecosystems and intensive learning services. And today, we are a part of it. So, meetups and webinars at where we can offer specific knowledge according to the uh, stage of development uh, that you present as the startups. Thanks to the qualified mentors with credible business experience that we um, uh, invite to do that so. Uh, thanks to uh, professional co-living experience made by the Residential Exchange Program. This is something that we can also offer and new plan in the future. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and twist offer to startups as well, an innov innovative co-working approach for open innovation by organizing challenges and collaboration with uh, public administration and large corporates. And Coming to the, uh, uh, to the point, today webinars, uh, this is slide number 12, will be provided by Julian Schulze, uh, who is a member of the board of Mediadilis. This is a pan-European investors network, uh, being constitutive of business angels and early stage venture capital funds. Since uh, creation, which is in 2008, Mediadilis has been promoting and encouraging early stage equity investment in high growth of startup companies in the area of digital technology. Uh, Media this is a member of IBAN, EBN, and NEEM. <laughs> As executive advisor, Julian Schulz specializes, who is our uh, host, but uh, but uh, 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 a speaker, uh, specializes in strategic financing and business consulting of technology-driven creative enterprises. Uh, enterprises. As coach and mentor, she supports SMEs in business planning and in getting ready for the investment. So I think that you are in the best hands today. <laughs> uh, 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 and, 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 and before I will the floor for Julien, I would like to ask you some technical things. Uh, uh, um, uh, my request would be if you have questions, just because there is pretty many of us, uh, please uh, type them on the chat. Uh, please also put them together later on uh, and give us your feedback within the email. I think the best would be if you could uh, email uh, me uh, my, on the presentation. You can see uh, uh, there is my email address at the, the last uh, slide, which is uh, uh, this is where you can find it. And, and please, uh, please, so you, then you can uh, then you can also type your um, questions. Uh, after the webinar, of course, during the webinar via the chat. Uh, also, please, we are asking you for the feedback, and uh, uh, in a way, we are happy that, uh, that there is so many of you attending, uh, knowing for the future that there is a big interest in that um, um, uh, in that topics, in that topic, and that in that subjects, we will be preparing ourselves also to be ready to organize maybe bigger uh, rooms for 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 our. Uh, for our webinars. Uh, from my side, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, please, Julian, if you could uh, continue. I hope that I didn't forget um, uh, to say anything uh, regarding the technical aspects. Uh, um, yeah, if, if yes, then if not, then, 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 then please, uh, uh, floor is yours. Thank you. 
Super, wonderful. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, this was a very fast <laughs> uh, <laughs> race through all the advantages of TWIST. Uh, I suppose you have more time to discuss that one-to-one um, -one because the project really does offer uh, lots of very interesting um, advantages to people. So I'm happy to welcome you all. Uh, all these webinars that we are doing, all these kind of digital meetings, obviously are quite weird because I'm talking to a little black hole in my laptop and I find it just <laughs> quite amusing to imagine that there are currently, I don't know, 26 people in a meeting room and I don't see one. Anyhow, maybe you see me somewhere as a video uh, picture, and if things go right, and Chris let me know, you should also see now full screen the Twist logo and the title of today's session. Is that so? Yes. Brilliant. So something is working. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. So um, in the context of TWIST and obviously to help you to make most of um, a program that will run through uh, all the way through December of last year, uh, next year, um, we uh, thought that we want to start with some essentials um, uh, in order to give you uh, the best possible starting point to uh, actually use what, a, uh, what TWIST is able to offer you. So um, that said, we want today focus on how um, actually you um, start with preparing a compelling business presentation. Why you do that? What the whole rationale is behind it? Um, who these people are that you will be pitching to eventually and maybe also have in your careers already? And to um, get a better sense of um, the context, uh, what investors are looking for, and how you best serve these kind of expectations. So um, I um, quickly want to um, remind you of, of uh, the kind of focus areas we have today. Um, and obviously the objectives that we are trying to accomplish. First of all, as I said, this is about helping you to be able to perform a professional business pitch. And the business pitch is uh, something that I will break down in detail towards um, the second part of this uh, uh, webinar. And um, in the whole series of uh, sessions that we will be having, this is only the starting point. There will, there will be several, and I will uh, explain to you what these other sessions uh, we'll be addressing, but to already give you a sense of orientation, it really is about um, uh, obviously being able to identify the right type of investors for your venture, because you want to uh, not talk to the wrong investors, because this is then a bad experience for both. Um, you might or might not know where to find these particular types of investors, so we want to speak about that as well. And um, we want to give you some kind of, um, let's say, reliable uh, methodology how to realistically evaluate your company. And you can imagine that this is always um, a point of discussion and sometimes and not really a point of disagreement between companies, uh, entrepreneurs and uh, investors. So this is very important. We also want you to better understand the whole due diligence process, what it covers, what it means, and how important it is to be patient and to be on time and to deliver um, even tough requests uh, quickly and so on. So that will be a subject. Uh, and then we walk you through typical deal terms uh, that you will then negotiate with investors so that you are prepared for that as well. And uh, last but not least, on um, closing a financing round and managing and handling follow-on financing rounds. So uh, this is basically what the whole series of webinars that are starting today are trying to walk you through. And we hope that we can um, turn question marks into some kind of uh, knowledgeable um, and, 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 and solid opinions in the end so that you are not guessing uh, anymore but that you know uh, a lot more and that you are much more confident in dealing with investors. Now we started pretty much on time. We um, want to, um, as already mentioned, um, begin with the essentials and I uh, want to, before we do that, quickly give you also 
a little bit more uh, background information on what Media Deals does. Then I want to um, address a couple of typical misconceptions uh, when we think of investors and speak about investors. Uh, then I will walk you through um, this whole yeah, set of questions. Why do I need a business pre a presentation? What is behind a business pitch? Uh, what is it that investors are really looking for? Because that sometimes can be quite enlightening. And um, it's also important to understand what investors want to know and what should be essentially part of the presentation so that we then can avoid typical uh, pitfalls and uh, just uh, smoothly navigate to a meaningful conversation. And after I've been through um, we, with these points, I then uh, want you to, and I will enable you <laughs> by uh, uh, opening all the microphones again, um, I want to then engage in a conversation with you and hear where you um, uh, have questions or remarks, which uh, I hope is the case, because obviously some of you are advanced and have already had relationships with investors. Um, so that said, I hope that's fine. Uh, I think in the proceedings, it's very likely that there are moments where you go like, oh, wait a minute, what are we talking about? I don't understand this particular term. If that's the case, please write in the chat window, stop, what is that? What does that mean? As you can already tell, even though GoToMeeting is quite simple in, 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 and, and let's say user-friendly, uh, we might be slow in reacting, especially me, because I will be fo focusing on the slides more than on the chat room, so I'm asking uh, 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 Christoph to have an eye on the chat room and to, to, to interrupt me and indicate if there is such a request from your side, if you say, wait, 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 I'm losing it, uh, please can you go back to such and such point and uh, elaborate. So please do so, uh, uh, don't be shy. And um, I think after that we can uh, quickly address a um, couple of, um, let's say, interesting uh, special aspects around media deals because we are a company, yeah, but we are um, a company that started as uh, an association and as a company based in Berlin, we are a pan-European investor network. And we are um, composed of business angels, of um, uh, especially early stage venture capital uh, funds. And all of the investors we work with really focus on uh, an interest and the ability to uh, invest cross-border, which is, as you might know in Europe, not self-evident because mostly angel investors are having a very local uh, view on, on, on investment opportunities. but. As a pan-European investor network, we obviously are having a strong focus on the cross-border activities of our investors. And not only that, we also uh, focus on something that is rather exotic, probably in uh, the views of many of you, which is the creative industries slash digital technologies uh, and or media. So there is a kind of um, strong emphasis on, you could say, everything that um, has, has one leg in the creative industries and one lack in uh, innovative uh, technologies, digital technologies. Uh, we started in the year 2008 and um, have ever since um, done several activities in, in regards to pitching forums, investment forums and also e-pitches in order to um, encourage early stage investment across Europe of course and um, to help um, our network identify high growth startup companies and as you see in, in the below bullet points it is in these areas of film, TV, video games, music distribution platforms or digital tools and services or and like many others uh, obviously we are happy if we uh, come across disruptive business models and uh, very switched on entrepreneurs who are having interesting new technologies and uh, especially cutting edge media technologies. So that said, you might think, hmm, I'm not doing any of that, and uh, why would uh, today's session be relevant? Um, funnily enough, no matter which vertical you are working in and, and, and in which industry you are positioned, the, the key questions about uh, how, to, to, how to prepare a business plan, how to come up with uh, the right business presentation, and then last but not least, how to pitch your business proposition 
all these questions are always the same. And um, we try to bring this kind of expertise to the creative industries more, which is a kind of, you could say, stubborn, uh, 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 ongoing uh, uh, hobby of ours uh, that we turned into a business. But I think um, in the proceedings you will see that um, it, in the end, doesn't matter in which sector you're active. Now, as an, a company and as a network, um, we um, also provide services to both ends of uh, the discussion, the entrepreneurs, you, and uh, the investors as well. And we try to um, support both um, areas, uh, areas is the wrong word, but both um, sides uh, of the coin, if you like, um, with uh, the needed skills and also the tools and methodologies in order to um, engage in meaningful conversations and in order to understand each other. Which means that we provide services uh, for entrepreneurs like business coaching um, that can be on site or as we do it today online. Um, we do that um, also via partner networks like F uh, Success, for example, a platform like Gust or Eurocuity. These are platforms that um, cover a lot of information uh, around investors and they give uh, entrepreneurs like you and companies, startups, um, an opportunity to showcase. So that's a very interesting way also for us to interact. And um, we um, help um, the companies we work with with things like we will discuss today, like pitching preparations or how to, to access the appropriate financing uh, sources. And uh, we engage and prepare uh, the companies we work with to then participate to investment forums, e-pitches, and networking opportunities are always often um, part, part of, of, of the events we uh, create. Um, the um, services we provide for the investors obviously have a slightly different quality. Here it is about matching investors with uh, the most promising startups, and we do that not as a kind of um, person who is recommending to an investor, oh, you should look to look at this company or talk to that person. No, we, we try to do that in a more professional way in uh, regards to uh, organizing such investment forums uh, and, and giving people opportunity to hear more um, investment propositions and then pick the one that they feel is appropriate. So it's about uh, engaging our investors in, in high uh, uh, and international events so that they can meet really advanced startups or early stage companies they feel are attractive. In the end, you could say it's really about bringing deal flow to uh, these investors so that uh, early stage investment in the digital, especially in the digital media and creative industries is possible. But in the context of the EU projects we engage in, obviously we do lots more and uh, are branching out of those particular um, industries that we are more interested in. Now you could say that um, when we are entering, let's say, a little section of general questions, that this whole proposition we are discussing is pretty simple, very straightforward, because you uh, are in business when you answer, or you can answer three simple questions. First of all, who's your customer? And what does the customer value in what you have to offer? Is it the whole proposition or is it a particular part in what you are doing? And third, how do you deliver uh, that particular value to your customer at an appropriate cost? These seem to be very simple questions, but in the end, you will see that answering each can take some time and it's not um, probably a straightforward answer, even though the context seems to be uh, very immediate. So this is basically it. If you know how to answer these questions, you pretty much have a good business case. And um, you could say, to elaborate a little, if you have the right idea at the right time uh, that is realized by the right team, then you already have identified a need in the market uh, that is a need or a problem. You have found a solution that is hopefully unique and maybe entails some innovative technologies, which means you have created added value. 
And this added value transforms into what in the business world is called USP, our unique selling proposition. So this is basically all we need to understand in a business um, presentation. And as simple as it sounds, obviously it entails a couple of um, rather detailed um, elements to consider. Before we go into um, more detail, I would be very interested to um, maybe get your reaction in the chat uh, window um, of, um, uh, on the question of, did you already deal with investors? Um, are there uh, participants in the room that um, already engaged in uh, such a question? Um, did you, at any chance, um, already receive private investment? And how was your experience? So if you feel like um, there is uh, a quick <laughs> one, two, three worded response, it would be fantastic to understand who has already experience with investors. Um, did uh, an equity investment happen already in your careers and how was um, the experience? So I give you just a few seconds to um, type something. And I'm uh, curiously looking at the chat window to see if something is coming. So far, I see nothing. I still see nothing. If I keep seeing nothing, <laughs> I will just proceed. And, um, with uh, the next thing, not for the moment, someone is saying, okay, preliminary talks, okay, that's very interesting, money, so somebody received money, no money coming in, okay, let me go up, Okay, so it seems that there are at least some um, experiences, they might be early, but it's very good that um, some of you already made that step and already kind of try to figure out um, uh, who these investors are and, 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 and how a discussion could be initiated. Brilliant, so um, to uh, begin with, um, some of the ideas that uh, those of you might have who did not yet talk to investors or the ideas that people got after <laughs> they spoke to investors, I'd like to go through a couple of um, typical misconceptions and obviously one being that uh, investors are sharks and that we are dealing with something like predatory capitalism um, if we are talking to investors and uh, that they are greedy and uh, eating us in, 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 in one piece and that this uh, experience, uh, as we all know after Steven Spielberg, uh, Spielberg's uh, Jaws, uh, it's by no means an experience that you easily survive. So I think this is a kind of shared notion amongst people that go like, oops, you know, these capitalist sharks and it's really not nice. Well, in the reality, uh, these are typical investors who have family lives and hobbies and uh, they, they sometimes are heavily engaged also in um, activities that have some social um, uh, bearing or they are uh, the founders of, of, of foundations in, in uh, the areas of culture or uh, social activities in their societies. So they are like us. There's nothing really different. Um, something might be different um, that is that uh, the money they made, uh, some are rich by all means, um, they do not invest in what you see here, all these sometimes uh, expensive hobbies and activities. Actually, they invest their money into uh, companies. And then you might think, hmm, that's fair and fine, but all they love when they do that 
all these spreadsheets and the numbers and the logic of the numbers and the math and all that. And this is for some very creative entrepreneurs, obviously quite heavy and less entertaining than many other things. But um, in reality, investors really want you to be telling the whole story, your full story as an entrepreneur. They are very interested in understanding why you choose to build up this particular company. They want to understand um, how this whole evolutionary process started. They are interested in the detail. Um, they, they want to engage. And it is important to understand that Story means story because in the end, even a business plan um, that has some 40 pages maybe, uh, and yes, it does have uh, numbers and Excel tables and all that, is a story. It is a narrative. And uh, it is very important to keep that in mind because investors who are passionate about young companies, who uh, love to work with entrepreneurs, they appreciate a good story. And um, that is probably something that um, is not well enough understood in uh, the moment when we put together a business presentation because it can be too dry and it can be too number oriented or too fact driven. But the, the whole concept, the whole journey is something that um, investors do appreciate and they want to hear. So it's something to keep in mind. And um, you might, uh, uh, share uh, the, the view that investors are risk averse, um, maybe from experience or uh, maybe because you haven't engaged in, uh, with investors yet. Well, actually, that is not the case because investors know where is no risk, there is no fun. They know that very well and usually they do not have a problem with risk. They have a problem with an unproportional risk. They have a problem with um, a risk they don't understand. And um, I think that is the more important lesson to take away because they love risk because this is where the adrenaline then kicks in and uh, they, they appreciate those moments like everyone else. But I think the risk factor is something for us entrepreneurs to understand and how, how we can make that transparent and how we can reduce um, the, the, the fear of uh, investors that something might be too risky. Now, a uh, shared notion also is that investors are only interested in money. That's all they want. I think I will make it a bit brighter. I feel that this is the room is getting darker and darker. Just hang on. Maybe. Maybe that's better. Um, so, you can say that um, this is probably one of the, the most sticky um, expectations that we have, that investors only want to participate in, in financial up upsides. Now, again, instead of that, investors are, like many of you, interested in success. They are, they, they are totally addicted to success stories. They love success stories. And by saying that, um, that can mean that the route, or often means that the route to success is not as straight as we all would like to. It usually is really, really labyrinthic and it can go several times in U-turns all the way back to your starting point and, and even further uh, uh, before you evaluate or uh, before you really make progress and before you really start to, to, to approach your, your uh, real objective and, and uh, goal. So all that is clear to investors and they know that they appreciate that and they want to be part of this success journey. So there's no problem um, on also this, uh, as you see on the right hand side, quite uh, complicated routes that uh, some um, paths to success take. And we tend to think that investors put us in chains, that uh, it is very difficult to act freely, that you have no more choices, that you are not your own man or woman anymore, that uh, whatever you do has to be run uh, along the lines of the investors or the board and so on, which to a certain degree is true, but overall this is not 
obviously <laughs> what is happening because investors understand that um, uh, the success that they are after, like you, can only be created if you work together. And if you see um, the two or more people uh, as a team where people uh, support each other and where um, there is no uh, kind of internal rivalry and investors tend to see themselves as that partner and they want to bring expertise and, and know-how and also all the kind of support uh, systems they have access to, to you, to support you and your company to grow. So this is a completely different motivation. And if there are complicated board meetings or uh, meetings with a management team and, and things that are not as easy and a little bit painstaking need to be discussed, it is because they want to understand decision-making processes. They want to understand how they can contribute. They want to understand how they can help. And I think this is one of um, the things we also need to consider, that an investor is usually not writing out a check goes home, sits and waits for revenues to flow. Uh, the, at least in angel investors we are working with and know from our uh, network, they are very active. They are uh, uh, very happy to engage with the companies they invest in and they want to know as much as possible in order to uh, support decision-making processes to the benefits of the company. And you might think, well, fine, but investors only invest in the big shots. They're not interested in the small companies and, and the one or two man uh, t team uh, uh, companies and the small enterprises that are very, very nerdy maybe or very alternative. They are all only going for the big names and I have uh, no possibility to put my foot down. Well, you might be surprised or you are not because you already have that experience. Really what investors really do, they invest in people. And they do that um, sometimes much more intuitively than you might think. And obviously investors are, like you and I, people with a sense and intuition and they do that with um, sometimes consulting with their brain and sometimes it's really a nose tickle that triggers uh, uh, an investment decision that is always, uh, of course, backed up by some, some uh, data and, of course, some due diligence. But the initial drive uh, that um, investors feel and also love can come from, from an intuitive decision. This is a great person. I trust this person, this is a, a, a great opportunity, I want to work with this person, I want to help make this proposition a success. So it is a people-driven uh, process, much more than it is related to Excel tables and lengthy business plans and this and that. We need to keep that in mind. And being so uh, dependent on the relationship that investors want to establish with you, the entrepreneurs, and obviously that you want to establish with them, we are talking about a very interesting currency, the currency of trust, because that is exactly what needs to be established. This is the whole foundation for um, the relationship between you and the investors, and it is the foundation for your business plan. And actually, this is the whole objective, if you, if you think about it, that you want to um, accomplish. Uh, the objective, uh, wait, here is an indication that the screen has paused. Uh, Christoph, can you let me know if you can see everything still? If you had experienced any kind of blackout? Everything is perfect. No black is good. Okay, yeah, that was a funny window popping up, so everything is cool. Great. So the currency of trust is much more important than the currency of dollars or pounds or euro. And uh, the, that currency has to be earned or the, the trust has to be earned. And it is something that you build up over time. And you do it in processes, in phases, and you you cannot once you get into this process, fail, and you cannot disappoint people. 
So it is a very interesting and, and very strong and very reliable uh, relationship that builds on trust. And um, I think we need to understand that all we talk about today and in, in, in the webinars that will be coming really links very closely to the concept of trust that um, people have in each other, that investors have in a business proposition that they obviously will challenge and test and try. But that is a very human kind of um, glue, you could say. So this is also why I find it so interesting. And it relates to questions uh, like um, very practical uh, questions of, of the investors once they uh, receive a pitch deck from you or a, a little business summary. They first of all want to understand how sellable the product is or the service. And they want to, of course, understand how high the investment risk is. And um, you can imagine that an investment risk, well, it, it, it sounds like, okay, there is one investment risk. In reality, there is an investment risk that looks quite different for different types of investors. And every type or every investor has something like a, a very um, special risk profile. So you could say all that means is that if I'm an investor, I say, if I lose an investment of 15,000 euros over the time span of six months, I'm fine, no problem. Others might say, if I lose 500,000 euros over a time period of a year, I have no problem. Others might say, actually, I cannot afford to lose more than 5,000 euros over a time period of three to four months. It is very different, as you can see. So everybody has a very different take at defining the investment risk, which obviously also means that entrepreneurs need to understand that because what they are offering might be way below an investment risk somebody is happy to take or way above. So that is a discussion to have. And obviously investors want to understand how high the return on investment is. And um, obviously that goes all the way into the area of the negotiating phase where you start to look at premiums and recruitment corridors and all these kinds of things. And they certainly want to know when the money is coming back. Why is that? Um, if you are an angel investor who um, has an investment of, let's say, three or four, maybe sometimes also more companies, um, they not only engage time and, and, and lots of care or invest time and care into those companies, they invest money. So that money sits in these companies for a couple of years. And if they come across another company um, after a certain time period and they want to invest in this company, they might not have the liquidity, the funds to do that. So they also plan their investment activities and they obviously want to sell their shares in companies to be able to reinvest in other companies or sometimes also the same companies when they expand and grow and uh, or uh, uh, offer different services and products. So it is important to also give them uh, uh, heads on the time span that this money that they are happy to invest in the company will be locked. Um, they are very happy to hear if someone else is already on board. And uh, sometimes you already have investment um, that can come from the three F, F as we say, the, the friends, the fools, and the family. Um, very often you have uh, funds coming from those early sources, and that is a good indication. Sometimes you might have engaged in another kind of competition and sometimes you want a price, and that was connected to some price money that in, comes in, in, in form of an investment, or you are in an incubator who has been uh, investing and owns a certain percentage of shares. So all that is very inf important information because once an investor knows I'm not alone, there is already someone on board who figures this is an investment opportunity. They are very happy with that. And then there are three very important questions uh, that they want to um, answer clearly um, and they want to, they probably will answer these questions to themselves first and then to you and they uh, uh, straightly link to the concept of trust. First of all, 
can you, the management, deliver what you promise and what you anticipate will be possible? That is an important um, aspect. Can you means um, is the whole environment in which you operate in, the market conditions, um, all the influences uh, that you are exposed to, are they allowing you to deliver what you uh, aim for delivering and what you uh, basically promise once you sign a contract? They need to understand that because sometimes if research hasn't been deep enough or uh, a market is changing very quickly, all that can have a, a straightforward impact on the business proposition. And then they want to understand, and you could say this is a little bit more psychological, will the management deliver? Which means they want to see your previous performances. They want to see your track record. Have you been operating um, in a leading position in another company already? Did you uh, already create a company? Did you already crash a company? Um, what happened in the past? And how reliable are you as the management when it comes to um, fulfilling your promises, living up to your promises? And then last but not least, they want to understand how you will deliver because there are usually almost always several ways of doing that and they want to understand which way you will opt for and why and they want to clearly understand which steps you will be taking and uh, the timelines that are uh, connected to that. So again you can see that some of these questions relate to very practical financial um, concerns, some others relate to basically you as a human being, as a person, as the person in charge of um, the company. So that means, uh, to summarize it, um, that they're interested in your track record, in your success stories as an entrepreneur or as the, the company that you are running. They absolutely, totally and fully want to understand who your target customer is who, in the end, will buy your product or service. This is super important. This is basically key. Because if that is a blurred and not so clear target group you are talking to, pitching to, and hopefully selling to, there will be several problems. So the defined and the level of definition of this target uh, client, obviously, is, is, is very important. And then they want to see sales projections. Obviously, this um, and I hear that often that, that companies, uh, young entrepreneurs especially, feel so uneasy about it. You know, how, how would I know? And how can I project my revenues? And it, all this feels like you have a crystal ball and, 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 and you are just guessing. Well, investors know that. They know that a projection is a projection. It is a forecast but they want to see how much you know of the market. They want to see how confident you are about the product in the market and why you believe it will perform in a certain way, uh, how uh, you um, will accomplish those sales and um, what that then means in terms of revenues. So it is understood that whatever you put in all these lengthy Excel tables is an assumption. But that assumption or these assumptions are based on market research, they are based on your knowledge of the market segment that you are working in, they are uh, based on the performance that you believe your product and service is able to, to uh, accomplish. And all this tells investors a lot, as you can imagine. But all that is not good if you do not have a very strong marketing and distribution strategy. Because if you have Great, a great client group, but you are lacking on understanding how you can mobilize this particular uh, client group and how you can actually communicate the existence of your products and services um, to, to this customer group, then you have pretty much nothing. So that is very important to, to, to hammer out in uh, not only the business plan, but certainly also in the business presentation. And um, of course, the, the, the logic of guarantees is something that um, investors find appealing in case there is, by whatever reason, and, and 
and, and, and because you might have a great relationship to a bank, maybe you have a guarantee or a guarantee by someone who was guaranteeing certain numbers of production or uh, sales or whatever it might be. So guarantees, as rarely as they uh, happen, obviously are something that investors would pay closely attention to. Um, some other elements, obviously, um, uh, that we can um, <laughs> blindly rely on is that whatever you do, whatever you propose, uh, and in the language of investors, should have traction in the market. Which means that when you think you have a good idea and when you think, hmm, there's really nobody else who's doing this, um, and you would um, begin a conversation with an investor right there, um, you would not find them excited. You would not hear a good feedback. They would be excited once you can say, I think this is a good idea and I think it is a good idea because I, I, I tried and checked the market reaction. And uh, that means that this market traction is basically uh, the first indicator for a new idea, for something innovative uh, to possibly work. So they want to see evidence of this market traction as much as they want to see that you have skin in the game. What does that mean? Uh, it means um, that you should have some substantial investment in your own company. And uh, obviously that is something that happened because of maybe lengthy development uh, phases of a certain technology or maybe you invested um, in, 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 in the, the physical um, room of your offices or you already hired staff, usually you already invested in your company. But sometimes there are uh, young entrepreneurs who think that they can attract an investor on the level of an idea and this is really, really happening quite rarely. So skin in the game means you have opened your pockets, you have dedicated amounts, you have committed to a fun financial contribution and the investor is not the only one um, who is financing uh, the venture. So um, we can say after asking um, the investors uh, our European um, investor network, what they actually pay attention to when they enter a room and they meet an entrepreneur or maybe they hear a couple of pitches, what is it that they pay attention to? And you can say that this is um, summarized in these four points. First of all, you might be surprised, a good business pitch. Uh, they really want to see a good performance. They want to lean back for a moment and enjoy the presentation of an entrepreneur who's speaking about something that he or she feels passionate about. They want to see great business pitch. And this has the component of facts and figures being um, communicated, and we'll come to that in a moment. But it has also, um, all, or it's, it, it, it also involves all the other soft factors, like you as a personality, the body language, the, 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 the fact that you might come across uh, very charmingly, that people like you, that you develop trust easily, that people really believe what you say. All that kind of is part, obviously, of a business pitch because you will be uh, having a very short period of time in which you try to convince people that what you are doing is a great idea and that they should come on board and, and share this venture with you. So the business pitch basically is it. A great business pitch usually opens the doors to later talks. And this is also why I put um, the business pitch and the art of preparing that at the very beginning of our webinar so that you can, in the due course, uh, elaborate it and work on your presentation and refine it. Secondly, they pay attention to match investment. And uh, match investment can come in the form of an uncle or a business partner or an industry partner or a buyer or a seller uh, who already invested in your company with X, where the, the investor goes like, okay, I match that. I pay the same amount. And um, that obviously is, is, is quite comfortable for both sides. 
because then the shared risk makes people more comf uh, comfortable and uh, also more confident um, that this is not too risky. And you feel that you have an equally mo motivated partner in uh, the company who is also paying close attention to what's going on and is supporting the company. And third of all, um, they are interested in the recruitment, which means how do they get their money back? What will happen with their investment? How long will it sit in the company? What are the conditions? And um, what are the certain uh, terms uh, for uh, recouping this amount? And then number four is the exit. And uh, the exit um, is um, in, in, in continental Europe, uh, sometimes a quite tricky thing because you uh, now have an investor on board or maybe two or three. And at some point they need their money back and they need to sell their shares. So they want to exit their investment, which means that um, they need to identify and you need to identify an actor player in the market who actually is interested in acquiring their shares in your company. And um, that is something that um, needs to be addressed very early. It needs to be addressed in a business presentation because of its relevance, it's ranking number four at least. And this whole subject of exit is, is, is complicated uh, because we are not in Silicon Valley and because we are not in the US market, because we are in continental Europe and because we are lacking something like a mid-sized um, or a middle-class and mid-sized group of um, companies that are big enough to acquire smaller sized companies or to merge with them. Uh, we have bigger and very small companies and this kind of juicy middle that you find in the US a lot is not as uh, developed in, in Europe. Which means that cleverly and carefully thinking about a potential later buyer for the shares that you want to sell to an investor obviously is very appreciated. So the approach that investors take um, needs to be understood uh, because sometimes there are some, some, some uh, misconceptions there as well. Um, you probably know from past experience that most of them bring um, some heavy experience from the IT sector to the companies that they invest in. Um, often they have been running uh, a couple of um, enterprises in this area alone, selling them uh, to, to, to uh, the market and then reinvest whatever they made into those new uh, and upcoming startups. And um, they, uh, the, the angel investors and also um, smaller venture uh, funds that we know and work with all have a pretty high growth um, view on things. So they, they are expecting high growth potentials in the companies they uh, invest in. And they want to see that the business model is scalable. That's something that uh, has been working in one segment of the market or maybe in one um, uh, country in Europe can work in other segments of the market or in other companies of Europe. So the scalability obviously is something that they are really looking for and that is highly attractive. And I mentioned that um, already a bit, they usually follow a portfolio interest, which means that they have an investment into a couple of companies that they um, have an, an overview on uh, um, how these companies operate. Um, often um, uh, investors are interested in the synergies that these uh, companies they have invested in can create amongst each other. And sometimes there is competence and expertise in one company that is useful for another. So obviously these are things they want to um, uh, mobilize as well. So this portfolio interest not only means that they need to see their money back after a certain time of year so that they, use, so that they can uh, reinvest in other interesting companies. It also means that they try to make sense of the, 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 the various investments they have. And we spoke about um, the balanced uh, risk profile already. Okay, I see here is, wait, wait, wait. I need my glasses, hang on. <laughs> In the chat room, there was a note. It's only me, he says. 
Uh, okay, so no concerns. All this cool. <laughs> Fine. So the chat window is so small in my eye window. I need my, my glasses to see it. Anyhow, um, we addressed um, the, the, the question of the balanced risk uh, profile already, which means obviously that they have their own risk profile, so they know what they can pretty much lose or should not lose. Um, but they also want to see that the risk that they are engaging in by investing in you is balanced uh, in, in the sense that you have the right set of competencies, you have the right skills to pull off what you want to do. So you can actually run the show and it will be um, beneficial for everyone. Now, that said, they will want to look at the market size. The noise you might be hearing is a rain. Uh, that's <laughs> coming down currently, so don't don't worry. Um, and I want to see how the, the market, the overall market size and the share that you intend to take in this market is kind of balanced with the risk that they uh, engage in. Um, so these are informations that obviously are developed in the business plan and they will be shared in the business pitch as well. Um, you, those of you who have been talking to investors already might already know that investors are usually not interested in sharing any income with you. Uh, what they want to see is that your company uh, has the ability to grow and that this is expressed in a higher valuation after they have been coming on board. And they want to share this capital growth and they want to see that they can share, that they can uh, sell uh, the shares they um, own after a couple of years. Five is ideal. Uh, today, some in investors suffer a little longer uh, because they see that their money is coming back after seven years because the market is a bit slower in Europe. But it should not be longer, actually, because then they have no reinvestment opportunity. Okay, and then, of course, they want to um, see uh, what the return on investment is, what percentages of premiums can you uh, offer them. And, and I cannot say it often enough, they need to see a clear exit strategy. And we spoke about the, the, the problem of um, uh, fewer mid-sized buyers in the European market. Uh, so there, there is some emphasis on thinking about it and we should underline it because it's sometimes new for, for some uh, startups that they have to think about selling the shares they try to sell in five to seven years from now and that they have to put their head around market uh, players who could actually be interested in doing that. But this is a, 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 an important exercise to do. I see another note here. Okay, very good. So um, I want to also share with you um, what um, the venture group in London has um, identified as being the top 20 reasons why startups fail. And uh, without going into a lot of detail, we can say first and foremost, they fail because there is no market need. And there is an R needed here in the market, in the make it. <laughs> so in the market, there is no market need. This is what it actually should say. That is interesting because obviously the premises of selling uh, shares in a company is that this company is serving a market need. So price, the, 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 the first and foremost reason why startups fail is there is no such market need. That is a very interesting and quite scary conclusion. The second problem that startups are running into is that they are actually running out of cash. So that means that the cash flow planning um, has been maybe a little bit too short-sighted and they need to come to terms with that. And sometimes it's too late because when they have no more money to pay, then they have to let the staff go if the company closes quickly. And the third uh, point is, um, that they don't um, have the right team, which means team equivalent to competencies. And the competencies that are lacking can be a lack of business know-how, it can be a lack in the management team, but it can also be a lack of, of skills in uh, the design or manufacturing team. So this is very important to understand that um, it seems impossible, 
that um, uh, we, we look at these three main problems, but actually this is why startups usually fail. So with all this in the back of our heads now, let's approach the practicalities of what a business pitch actually is about, how it looks like, what it covers. Um, first of all, um, you see uh, on this slide um, the, 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 the phrase, a typical seven-minute business pitch. Uh, you might have done four-minute business pitches. You might have done one- or three-minute business pitches. You might have done 15-minute business pitches. The seven-minute business pitch is something like a, 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 a well-established um, format because of a very practical circumstance. When you go to a market, for example, uh, or a big festival uh, in, your, um, in your industry and you plan a meeting, you often have a 15-minute time slot to actually have a quality um, conversation with your, your partner, which means you cannot, you should not, you must not uh, uh, take those 15 minutes to bombard your partner with all the information you feel you need to say. Uh, opposite to that, you take half of the time after shaking hands and speaking about the weather and having a sip of your water or whatever, you have half of the time on your side to express what you want to do. The other seven minutes are for your business partner to give you feedback. This is very important because if you would say, oh, 15 minutes, cool, I can, you know, relax, go ahead and just speak about all the stuff that uh, I feel I want to uh, address and, 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 and make this person uh, understand, you would create a very bad impression. So it's always important to understand if you have a 10-minute time slot, you should only talk four minutes. If you have a 15-minute time slot, you should not talk more than seven. It should be that. And it's not about saying everything that you have to say. It's absolutely, absolutely not about that. A seven-minute <laughs> seven business presentation is about presenting the value proposition of your project or your service. This is important. You need to say the most important things. You need to highlight the key factors why this is so great. And you should not um, uh, uh, put yourself under the pressure of having to say everything that there is in the world to say about your, your product. Because first of all, you cannot. And secondly, you will talk so fast that nobody will be able to follow you. So in this business page, what you do is you present your team, your company, you present your business model, you make an offer, and you start a dialogue. That really is actually what you want to accomplish. You want to say the most important things about these, uh, these areas and you want to leave a good impression. You want to be um, remembered as a professional who has not been wasting people's time because you were efficient and short and brief and on the dot. And you want to create um, a foundation for further talking to that particular investor or this group of investors. So starting the dialogue is all what you want to accomplish with a business pitch. That is very important to take away. Now, the content of uh, the business uh, 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 pre uh, pre <laughs> presentation, business pitch, um, goes along the lines of what you already created uh, in your business plan. So it really follows the same uh, logic and order with maybe the exception that you start within the seven minutes that you have with a power pitch because you want to get people excited. You want to grab investors' attention. You want to uh, make them drop their pen, listen to you, follow your story, be totally fascinated, and um, uh, have this instant uh, 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 yeah, deep impression on, on, on something interesting here. Then you talk about the product and service um, in uh, more detail. Then you address the market, the market opportunity, the market size, the market share. And then you speak about the management team. You do that in the logic of showing that you have the right people in your team to pull this off. And then you turn to the financial projections. You will talk about, um, <clears throat> and we, we see that the cornerstones of your financing plan, your cash, cash, uh, cash flow plan, and so on, in order to um, build the foundation to then make your investment proposition. 
because in your financial projections, you will also highlight when you expect to break even so that people can say, oh, all right, so this is a year and a half and then they break even and then the first returns are coming in. So you already create a sense of orientation so that when you make the investment proposition, people go like, okay, that is an interesting balanced risk uh, of investment. In detail, it means when you start with a power pitch, what you want to um, address is that uh, you want to catch the audience attention from the very beginning. And you give yourself only 30 seconds to do that. And it is really about being energetic, performing. It's about showing how, how motivated you are to uh, uh, do what you do and how great you think this opportunity is for people to come on board. It shouldn't be exaggerated, but it should be just in the right proportion. You will, um, in this um, brief 30 second uh, power pitch, um, quickly say which problem in the market you identified or in the industry and how you solve it. What is it that you offer really? And why is that unique? Why is this innovative? Why is what you do not only a problem solver, but why is it also very different from maybe other attempts that exist? You will address who you are actually targeting with this solution. And you will speak about the marketing and distribution channels you will use in order to actually reach your target customer. Then you will speak about the return on investment uh, of course, the potential return on investment. And then you go to the company's profile to show we have done that already uh, successfully with our past company or we have, I don't know, a award-winning team in place or whatever it might be that you have to say on your side. So then you go into depth and describe the product and your service um, that you um, uh, want to attract investment for in in the needed detail, which also means in enough technical detail, uh, but it also means in a language that people are able to follow, because you might not always uh, actually pitch to people who are insiders in your sector. I see there's another little message. Give me a second. Okay. So, um, this is also a point that we find is sometimes a little bit more tricky for especially very technology driven companies because um, the people in, in, in let's say an, an internet company or any IT uh, company uh, have a terminology that is very specific to what they do and they might be pitching to people who are not acquainted with um, uh, the, the, the terms. So you need to consider that um, you might pitch to an audience that grabs a few things but is not as much an insider into those um, technical terminologies as you might be. So make sure that you use a language that is well balanced between technical enough uh, so that we understand you know what you're talking about and um, easy enough for people to also understand complex or maybe very specific uh, things. So we want to understand um, uh, on that slide, for example, that you would dedicate to this content, what your product and service is actually offering. And you do that by clearly demonstrating um, its USP, its unique selling proposition, which really should be unique and it should not be something that everyone else is doing, obviously. And you want to show how your product differs from all the other products in the market because sometimes people say mm, there is nothing like that, uh, we are the only ones and then after some weeks of research they figure oh actually there are other ones. They might be in the US, uh, they might be in Asia but actually there are competing products in the market. So it is very important to understand that for the investor that you have done your research, that you know um, how competing products look like and uh, how you differ from them. And they also want to understand if there are any barriers uh, for such competitors, uh, for example, to enter the particular market segment that you are covering and that you are active in. Um, so this is a, a, a very important thing to consider because the higher the barrier is for others to enter the market segment, the more attractive your um, offer is. 
And then they want to see how your product actually adds value to the customer, which basically means the, 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 specific, no, the um, specific value in your solution of that particular problem you identified. And you remember we spoke about the scalability. They want to understand if this particular technology or the service that you are um, uh, uh, producing and offering is scalable. If it only can be sold to a limited number of people in a limited uh, uh, market um, and it can only be sold once, it is very unlikely be to, to, to be attractive. But if it is working in a country and then will be working in several more, obviously it, it will be very, very interesting. Or if you can scale a technology from one user um, uh, context to another, that is super. After that, you address um, the bits and, and, and details of the market. Uh, again, you want to underline that you understand and you can prove that there is commercial opportunity uh, to, to join forces for the investor and that you actually have a case here to, to sell your product or service. So you want to um, speak about the customer base in, in uh, good detail because again this is important to understand who are you actually selling to and do these people need what you offer. So there needs to be a link obviously. Um, you speak about the general market size and then you speak about that particular market share that you uh, intend to attract. And you need to then um, also address um, how this product or the service will be priced and you will of course uh, um, also um, share the information on costs. It's just a number, it doesn't have to be a spreadsheet or something. You speak about the ways you market and distribute this particular solution to a particular problem to this particular target uh, clients and you uh, mention the competitors that there exist, in this case the companies and um, one sometimes, especially when they are uh, US based, you find also numbers uh, in the web on uh, their share and how many people they have, uh, so information beyond what they might reveal on their websites. So this is very important because every investor wants to know who are the competitors, how big are they. If they are too big and you are very small, then there are uh, concerns that need to be um, addressed and there need to be some answers to some interesting questions then. Um, and it is important um, that you show how you will be um, dealing with any competing goods and services that are out there in this market segment that you are operating in. Because it's very possible that there are things that are not too unsimilar, but still you differ, still you have a great USP. So it's important to understand how you deal with that. And then um, you speak about the management team and uh, to a certain extent um, the, the key staff if, if you have let's say two or three people who are not in the management but are very very important for the company. So again you remember that this is really the investment trigger that investors see you as the CEO, the managing director of a company and they go like hmm, this is a cool person, I really trust this person, this is a great opportunity I want to spend the next four years of my life dealing and working with this person. I really want to invest time and efforts to help this person to build this company and to make this company a success. So this is really the whole relationship and this is a real, this is like a marriage if you like and uh, it should not be uh, underestimated how important it is. So you need to demonstrate your confidence uh, and ability that you can handle this project you, you want to show that you have the right experience people in, on board, that you have the right uh, skills that are required to deliver, to deliver this uh, uh, product and service in the budget that you foresee and in the time that you can give yourself. And um, then you go a little bit in, de in detail on the experience and background. And um, that important, uh, the important aspect here is that you show, let's say, success stories that you have under your belt some things you have accomplished in the past that have relevance to the current um, proposition that you're offering. It should not be something completely different. It should not be something that is 
totally unrelated to the venture that you are presenting. And also important is that um, you openly address um, any shortcomings. There might be gaps, there might be areas of expertise that you do not have or you feel you are not so, so educated in. If that is the case, and it often is, and often has some, um, something to do with, let's say, the business aspects of running a company, running a company, the management aspects or the, um, um, the administrational uh, aspects of running a company, be open about it. Address it, say, look, this is what we have, but yes, we do understand that we are not very, um, very good in, in this or that area or that we still need support because if you speak to business angels, they either personally might be happy to fill the gap and to contribute that particular missing expertise, or they might know someone. So the investor at that uh, level of, of discussion um, can um, solve the problem uh, with a blink of an eye. So this is why it is so important not to hide it, because you might think it is a weakness, or be open about it, address it, and show that you are confident to, 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 to find a solution for that. Now then um, you go into the details of the financial projections. So um, the, um, the, the importance I think is, is clear for everybody because um, when you then enter the negotiation phase with the investors, for example, about uh, the valuation of your company, further milestones, and as we discussed, exit opportunities, um, you will, um, they, all these negotiations will um, influence your financial projections, but also your rational, your understanding of the market uh, reaction to your product and the potential of your sales obviously influences all the rest. So the numbers then and the Excel uh, uh, tables, the spreadsheets then are obviously the language that uh, will be spoken. And um, again, it is important to um, show openness about um, working on the numbers. They shouldn't, I mean, they should be very well researched. They should be based on um, uh, market data that is solid. At the same time, uh, they should not be overly optimistic, so they should be really realistic. And once you see there are possibilities, you could do it this way, you could do it that way. It's always good to indicate that to investors and say, we are open to discuss. You know, we have opportunities here, we, can, we have several choices. How do you see that? How do you feel about that? Because again, uh, the investor, like you, wants to maximize the value of your company. So this is the shared motivation. So you will, um, in this probably one slide, if you think about uh, a PowerPoint presentation as a business pitch, which is good and fair and fine, you will um, offer the financial projections in form of a profit and loss account, a balance sheet maybe, certainly cash flow statements because that can be crucial to understand when are you running into cash flow problems. And uh, very important is to indicate when you expect to, uh, to break even so that investors understand are we looking at a very long development uh, phase here which can be fine in its own rights, but it's important to understand that and when are we actually seeing um, the revenues ticking in. Now, the, 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 the projections that you will come up with um, should, as it says, be a kind of realistic balance between what is achievable based on your market assessment and your knowledge and the expectations that you have um, for your uh, product and services. But they should not be too um, conservative, let's say. They need to be ambitious because an investor wants to see um, that there is some meat. The investor wants to see that there is potential. And, um, oh, I can see that you cannot see me anymore. Wait, this is maybe too bright now. <laughs> I think this is better. Yeah, it looks a bit better, very good. 
Um, so you want to make sure that you, you, you speak about the realistic potential that you have researched as much as you in those numbers express um, your confidence that um, this is an attractive investment opportunity. And last, but certainly not least, you make your investment offer and you speak about the exit. So the key question here is how much money will you need to achieve the goals that you have been highlighting in the previous slides and for how long will you need this money? So um, how much, how long and what will you do with it and what are you willing to give the investor in return? How many percentage of your company are you willing to give up? Um, so first of all, you will identify the level of funds that are required and you will identify the areas you will spend it on and uh, when. So sometimes that can be nicely expressed in a kind of roadmap with a timeline where you indicate, okay, we will accomplish this then and for that we need X amount of money. Uh, because that can be also an interesting uh, negotiation uh, or a starting point for a negotiation when you have a kind of broken down investment um, uh, roadmap so that investors can say, look, I see in, in a total you need, I don't know, 250,000 euros or a million or something. Um, I cannot give you that now, but I see that until, let's say, uh, April 2016, you will need that amount. I can give you that. And then you know, I can make sure that as, you know, time goes by and you have to um, um, attract more funds for the next stages that all of that is happening. Because sometimes you do not need that 250,000 or 1 million on day one. You might need it uh, spread over a certain time, time frame. Um, you will then speak about the return on investment and uh, make sure that um, that return on investment is, is, is benchmarked with other examples in the market in your specific industry you are working in. It should be attractive, but it should not be crazily high because then it becomes unreliable and uh, more fiction than fact. And important also is that um, when you consider that, you want to anticipate that you probably need more than one investment round. So it's tricky if you offer an investor 30% uh, of the company shares for 15,000 euros, for example, because these 15,000 euros won't last long and they will be spent very quickly. And then already 30% of your company are gone. And for the second round, what are you offering them? So it needs to be balanced between the valuation of your company, what your company is valued at, and um, obviously with the expected more investment, further investment that you actually need to achieve um, those milestones that you have identified. So that is very important. Sometimes the, the, the willingness of companies uh, can be too high to say, oh, 25% of the company then after the second uh, investment round, you find yourself in a minority shareholder position. And this is not what you want. And this is not what investors want because they want you to be in charge and they want you to be motivated to make your company a success. Then you speak about the exit strategy, which means you need to uh, give them an understanding of who these actors are in the market who could be interested in acquiring the shares of this investor and um, uh, what also their kind of perspective is and their strategy could be like. Again, we are talking a time span of five to seven years. So you need to be really anticipating and quite, quite um, good at understanding the market trends. So there are, to close this area, um, five, five secrets basically that um, I quickly want to share with you. Uh, to a professional and successful business presentation. First of all, it's <laughs> omniscience. You want to provide newest research data. That is key. You will not go uh, get away with old unknown data. So you want to uh, uh, use statistics and, and industry um, uh, data that you can get your heads on, hands on. Um, you want to also uh, make very, very clear how your product, and I said it a couple of times already, um, what, your, what problem your product or service solves in the market. 
uh, this should be very highlighted and this is what people should remember. Again, in regards to language, it should be understandable, at least also show latest terminology so that people trust you as uh, an industry insider. And if you can, and if your, your technology or services allows you, try to use powerful props, something, some, some kind of uh, visual uh, that um, uh, helps people to, to uh, memorize uh, you and, and your presentation. Um, any kind of visual support really increases an audience's ability to remember you largely, I think almost 300 no, almost 200 percent. So it's really, really important to use visual support as much as you can. And if you have, I don't know, some some 3D model of something, uh, take it to a presentation, give it to people, let them pass it on. If you have a sketchbook of something, do the same. Important is to practice because there are certain things that obviously are easier for you to present and there are others that you feel less confident. So this is why you need practice, practice, practice so that you really create a smooth and, 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 and very um, uh, fluent presentation. And it is important to avoid overload. So you do not want to create slides that are full of text and are just uh, giving people headaches because they will instantly shut down and will disconnect from your presentation. And we could say in summary it means keep it simple, avoid overload, use visual support, practice and again and again think follow-up. Uh, one of the key things that um, puzzle us um, <laughs> is that um, investors sometimes say Mm, not sure or maybe no to an investment proposition uh, and then people don't go back to the investors they have been pitching to or meeting in person. It is absolutely important, totally important for you to understand that once you have met investors, be it in a one-to-one -one or be it um, in uh, a group meeting in a group pitch, you need to follow up because this was your first and initial contact you had it was the first time you offered them a proposition. It might be that at this particular point in time, maybe they have no money because it sits in other companies, but maybe they have a friend who would be interested and they need to talk to and they need to be reminded to do that. So this initial contact is really just the very beginning. Once you had a pitch, once you have the business cards of the investors in the room, follow up. Don't spam them. With, with stuff nobody's interested in. Give them quality information on how your venture develops, what your next steps are, if you were able to attract um, the finance from another financier, because maybe then that financier would turn you down and says, oh, interesting, I, I didn't think it was too stupid, so now I'm motivated. It is important to understand that. You know, no doesn't mean no forever. No might mean no for today or next week or next month, or it turns into something like a yes once the circumstances um, uh, changes a bit and your your development the development of, of your company changes a bit. Think follow up very important. So I think that wraps it up for today. So I hope you have um, a kind of understanding of what um, the business pitch looks like. So um, what's next? After we have been talking um, about, let's say, the, the, the theoretical uh, uh, things, I want to invite you to um, create such a business presentation, such a business pitch, based on the layout that is in this, um, in this webinar. I want to invite you to create that. I want you to give it a shot. I'm sure that some of you did it already in the past. Some of you might have never heard of it, <laughs> so maybe we look at an interesting uh, uh, span of, of, of experience. So um, please do that, all of you, and send it in. Send it to Christoph um, and uh, Machi, who will then uh, forward it to me. And um, the idea would be that we take one, two, maybe three, depending, um, the case studies out of the presentations you sent schedule another webinar, discuss 
what is good in these presentations, what should be maybe changed, where, where was a misunderstanding, what can you improve, so that the group can learn based on um, the individual uh, discussion of um, the business presentation. So then we want to give you the, the, uh, the opportunity to amend um, your, um, your, your uh, presentations, obviously, and uh, you will then um, enter into one-to-one -one consultations with um, some of our experts that have expertise they can offer you to discuss certain, of course, very specific questions uh, that you might have and um, uh, do and improve the, 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 the uh, business presentation to a level that we feel, yep, you're ready. If there is um, any investment forum uh, that you want to attend, you actually do have a proper business presentation that you can bring and you are ready to do that. So this would be, let's say, the total um, preparation phase that we uh, hope to uh, finalize until November of this year. And then we want to continue with different subjects of webinars that go along the lines of the content uh, I um, already um, addressed in the beginning, how you can identify the right type of investors for your venture, what investment strategies are, how a due diligence process looks like and what invested deal terms really can mean for you, how you value your company and how you um, manage a, a follow on rounds, handle and manage follow on rounds. And then in January 2016, we want to then see what what kind of um, specific questions you as a group uh, are putting out to us and then we come up with another set of uh, webinars to answer to those uh, questions and help you obviously also in consultations on a more individual level to tackle that. So um, allow me to quickly conclude. The idea really is um, to understand that yes, uh, fundraising is time consuming. Yes, it is emotionally encumbering, uh, no question. But I want you to remember that um, investors are allies and they see themselves as partners who are available for you. And um, they appreciate a, key, a clear communication and they appreciate it also if you listen to them because uh, it's clear that they can offer a very valuable um, view and opinion from an outsider, which can propel you to a different level in building your company. It is important to um, carefully analyze investors. They do that with you, but you should do that with them as well, because again, uh, an investor can contribute more than only finance. So you want to understand what the investor can actually bring to your company and why this alliance could be uh, so interesting. So you want to build enthusiasm and trust. And also important is that you understand you want to socialize and cultivate contacts and you um, want um, to create a relationship um, with the investor when you meet them in social events, for example, uh, because uh, talking to an investor you, you haven't met or you haven't been introduced to is really a tough one. So socializing and cultivating contacts is really important. Uh, Julian, I think you muted yourself. I did. When? When did I mute myself? Yep. I, about just, just, just like uh, 15 seconds ago. Oh, good. So, oh, very good. So, okay. was it the slide? This slide? Uh, so, I was looking only at uh, uh, while you were talking. Yeah, there, 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 this was this slide. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Super. Very sorry for but that. Only the last, ten, only last 10 seconds. So, no very worries. Good. So um, maybe from reading what's on the slide, um, you understand that uh, the webinars we are looking at are uh, separated in a preparation phase that we started today and then uh, in a different um, uh, stage where we will create more targeted investment webinars. But in this preparation phase, to repeat it since <laughs> you were not able to hear me, it's really about 
uh, taking today's um, let's say introduction as a starting point for you to create your own business pitch, uh, which should not be longer than eight, maximum nine slides, uh, including the hi, uh, my company logo, blah, blah slide. Um, so I invite you to do that. Uh, so you take a shot. Uh, some of you might have done that already. Some others might not even have heard of the business pitch, but now you have. So take, take this template um, that we walk through and create your business pitch. It's a draft. It's a first take. It's a try. It's cool. You send it to Christoph and Machi. They will share it with me. And then the idea is to uh, take one, two, or maybe three cases out of that and to use those cases as a discussion point for the whole group to say, look, what, what really works well in this business pitch, what needs to be changed, what should be added, so that we have, again, a kind of effective learning um, uh, for all of you based on tangible uh, pitches that uh, the group has been sending in. And then um, you should have the opportunity to revise your presentations, all of you. And then we want to, in one-to-one -one <clears throat> sessions, help you to um, uh, tackle problems that you might have experienced to answer questions which might be um, uh, important for you. So that in the end, by November, you do have um, a presentations um, uh, that could be considered professional business pitches that you can use for participations at markets or any uh, uh, pitch forum that might, you might be attending. And after that, we want to go through the subjects that you see in this um, Excel table that really go through identifying the right type of investors for your ventures, the proper investment strategy for you, the, the meaning of due diligence and what is happening in this process, the deal terms that investors want to discuss with you, and the valuation, the proper valuation of a company that is rather philosophical, as you can imagine. And then we want to go through um, the, 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 the meaning of handling and managing follow-on rounds. And after that, and then we would be within January uh, 2016, you probably have some more questions or there are some areas that we want to address and then we will create webinars according to those uh, subjects that we have been discussing with you. So this is the, the kind of idea of the whole series of webinars we want to do um, with you guys uh, in, in Warsaw and maybe other participants in um, the ACE Creative Program. And um, I think you read that and I don't need to repeat this. Important is um, probably here again to, uh, to highlight um, that investors see themselves as partners who are supporting you in um, turning your business proposition into a successful venture. And it is important for you to understand that not only the investors are doing, doing their research on you as a company, you should do your research on them as well to understand what else, what besides money they can bring to your company. So this is important because that maximizes the uh, or intensifies and maximizes and, and make, makes your relationship with an investor more effective and more fruitful. So you want not only to build enthusiasm and trust in a business presentation, you also know now that it is important to engage on a social uh, level with investors. You need to cultivate a relationship with investors so that they know you from a good and professional um, uh, performance that you, you uh, were able to deliver and that um, they, they are more happy to engage in a conversation um, that you um, uh, are opening to them because if you do not have any contacts, if you do not have any kind of introduction to investors, it's very difficult to really get them to, to, to meet and talk to you, to meet you and talk to you. So this was basically all from my end and um, uh, now I want to unlock your blocked microphones uh, so that you can bombard me with questions and ask um, any questions that you might have in terms of um, something that you might not have understood well or that you want to share with us because you had previous experiences uh, with investors. So I'm shutting up now. <laughs> and uh, uh, thank you for your attention. And I'm happy to, to receive your comments.
Yeah, so b before any comments, uh, really thank you. Uh, it was it was great uh, experience as well for for myself. Although I can feel that I have a little bit of experience in, yeah, very sweet. Thank you. in, in that part as well. Uh, I cannot wait uh, to continue basically and and together with more extended information and follow up with uh, also with you guys. Uh, uh, the startup entrepreneurs. So um, yeah, it's uh, uh, well. I I I, I do. I'm, I'm happy also about that uh, today, Friday afternoon, and so uh, many of you attended and 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 and, and listened to really extensive uh, and based on experience uh, 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 presentation. So um, from my side, uh, one more time, thank you. And then, guys, please, if you have questions, then please raise those questions right away. And if uh, if you want to think the stuff over, please send those questions uh, via the email also with your feedback if you have and requests if you would have as well some suggestions for us for the future for the for, for, for the plan for the uh, for, for the uh, for the future webinars. So don't be shy. Come on. <laughs> Okay, I see I here in the typing. chat room, yeah, but... how should the test presentation be delivered? Recorded video session? No, um, that's a very good uh, question, actually, uh, Benoit. Um, the idea would be that you um, create a PowerPoint presentation, I think, because that is um, a very effective tool, and uh, you will send the PowerPoint presentation to uh, Christoph. And, um, and 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 uh, also to 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 myself. Let me move on one slide. Here is my uh, email address at Media Deals, so you can um, send it in. Um, the initial feedback will be uh, made on the basis of your, let's say, seven to nine slide business pitch, PowerPoint slides. <laughs> More questions, please. I hear some people typing, but you can also speak, huh? Uh, hello, this is Ben. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, hello. Hello. It's Yes, hi. <laughs> yes, very well. Okay, cool. Now, I was, I was asking that question because actually I'm, I'm, uh, I've already done a presentation. Um, Brilliant. I already have a pitch. And the thing is, it's really, you were talking about um, making it like uh, very visual, and it's actually, uh, uh, it, there's, there's, there's very few words, and if I just send it in, you just won't understand it, because it's actually just a support. Oh, uh, I see. Support type of slides. Yeah. It's, it's actually drawings. If you know Dan Rome. Okay. You know Dan Rome, that's, it's a guy, he's, wrote, he's written a book about um, uh, drawing. Okay. When you pitch ideas, you, you use drawings instead of yeah. you know symbols and you know yeah. very um, graphics. You Super. just draw on the. So what I did is actually I drew uh, things. Uh, that I made drawings and well, those are my slides. Oh, so brilliant! If I send that in. It's not going to be. I very, understand. Uh, it's not really. <laughs> it's not going to give you a good idea of, of what we actually do. Absolutely true. So we should then schedule a Skype or something, uh, or use go to that. meeting again if you want. Uh, I think yes. it's not a bad tool. We can yeah, Skype, visual... Skype is good. But I, I, yeah, well, I, I think if you, yeah, if 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 what you're trying to do is is uh, um, a, a pitching ideas to investors, it's going to be you know uh, talk yeah. <laughs> with the support of uh, yeah. PowerPoint, but it's going to be talk. Right. So we yes. might as well just yeah, talk very good. That. Yeah, so we do that. Okay. No problem. We find a time and uh, schedule I'll, that. I'll send I'll send you an email or or Christoph. Brilliant, very good. Yeah, please, please do. Mm -hmm. Who else? There's a question about Jürgen uh, on on the chat. What about confidentiality? Uh, Okay, it's a little paranoid, but uh, and sorry, not speaking 
for the moment, but my English is horrible. Okay. Um, did you hear that? Uh, what I was. I see. What about confidentiality? So, okay, it's a little. Par <laughs> so uh, yes, it's horrible. Well, your English cannot be that horrible. Um, well, the confidentiality I think is a given, but if you feel feel you want, uh, let's say, people who uh, have access uh, to the presentation, you would send in sign an NDA. I think we have no problem with that either. You know. Yes, of course. That should be. No. Absolutely no problem. And no to, problem at all. Yeah, to design yeah, that yeah. or to draw a, a template out of uh, the drawer is no problem. So yeah, whatever I, makes yeah. you feel comfortable. I do also think that maybe there was a question uh, more general: how to do it, how to deal when you have to present your idea, uh, often without having a possibility to sign an NDA. I mean, and this is, of course, the case, yes? Uh, yeah. What type of business you are representing? Yeah, I mean, an NDA is the, the usual tool that you use. And um, I mean, if you go to um, a pitching event, for example, where several investors are attending, then you, you can do that. Um, if you, um, as an entrepreneur, are invited to participate to such a forum, it's not... Cisza uh, dziewczyny. Kurczę, zaczyna się przeszkadzać. Uh, was that a comment to us, or was that an internal comment? I heard someone speak. <laughs> I think it was Polish. <laughs> Okay, so I think the important is um, if, if um, uh, the person who asked the question, Jürgen, um, if, if, if it is concerning our internal communication that we will have within the program and the webinars, then it, we can handle that with an NDA. If it is uh, on a more general level, obviously you are always presenting based on uh, the notion that, that people talk about it. You will never go into, let's say, the detail uh, of um, revealing algorithms or revealing uh, certain secrets that you do not do. You speak about all those specifics with investors only in follow-on rounds when they already show uh, substantial investment interest or where meetings with other technicians might be scheduled, and then you'd create, let's say, another um, environment in which uh, an NDA is shared, for example. I hope that answers your question. Do we have more? There's an OK, what I understand is an opportunity participators are right. Yes, it is an opportunity. <laughs> I hope I didn't confuse you now. Good. <laughs> Very good. More concerns, comments, questions? Do you feel that when you receive the presentation that you just saw, you have enough information uh, to proceed with the business pitch? So here's a question, Piotr, do companies, your investors put money into need to be transferred to Germany? No, 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 no. Um, this is uh, not necessary and again, Media Deals is a pan-European investor network, so we have investors from several countries, uh, Poland being one. Um, you could say that there is a stronger likelihood that a Polish investor will be attracted to a Polish company but uh, it's not a given and obviously the cross-border investment as I stressed in, in my introduction is a key um, focus area for media deals. So cross-border is very, very important. And I should maybe add that um, uh, the, 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 the logic coming with cross-border investment um, is that uh, by attracting an investor, let's say from France, um, you get access to the French market because uh, a strategic investor in your company who is based in France and sees there's potential 
for your product and service in France obviously will help you to access that market. So it really is about um, uh, maximizing um, uh, the, 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 the market potential and the expansion and growth potential for your company by going outside of your home territory via the, the contribution of an investor and the support of an investor. More questions maybe? Your microphones are all on, no? you, can, you can talk. Okay, I think you understood, wonderful. <laughs> but please also speak. <laughs> Don't be shy because I'm not a native speaker either. So, uh, you know, <laughs> as you figured. <laughs> Christoph, do you uh, feel that there might be... Ah, Piotr has another question. Otherwise, Christoph, think of one. Bye, Jürgen. <laughs> See you soon. So, Piotr, we are waiting for your question. Christoph, do you have one on your mind, maybe? Something that you... Thought could be of interest. Something we should discuss. I can hear. Uh, I I, uh, I thought uh, someone was, uh, someone is trying to ask a question. Uh, yes, please. Yes, hello, hello, Juliana. Thank you for so much. We have several meetings soon, and I would like to ask you how to find the right balance between emotions and meat in presentation. Emotions and meat. Did you say emotions and meat? Which means the facts, I guess. Yes, this is this is the idea. The the emotions and the facts. That's this is what you meant. Yes. Uh, yes, I guess yes. <laughs> I've heard uh, very slightly yes. So uh, <laughs> the question was uh, the emotions uh, versus the facts. Uh, it, it's how really should be balanced. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it shouldn't be a versus because um, uh, the emotions are very important and uh, investors are people. Investors have intuitions, they have likings and dislikings like all of us. Uh, that means that um, an emotional layer should, should uh, only support a good uh, presentation. And if you mix that um, uh, with uh, solid facts, and um, you uh, support uh, the case and the story that you are uh, conveying with um, uh, structured and researched data, it's, it's the best you can do. You know, there's nothing less uh, interesting and inspiring than a dry, only fact-based presentation versus um, there's nothing more, uh, uh, I don't know, What's the English word? Um, uh, of course, I'm 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 slightly tired, <laughs> and I'm not as quick anymore in finding words. But um, it, it it can be disgraceful if you engage into, let's say, a very humorous presentation, and you have no facts to offer. So I think just by asking the question you asked, you got it. It should be both. It should be. Uh, emotional, it should be entertaining, it should be captivating, it should be uh, intriguing, it should be fact-based in the end, so that everything that gets you excited as the presenter is backed by data. Mm. Yes, and if I may, it also depends from the, the business you're representing. It's, it's a little bit different, different if it is a fintech or media, yes? I mean, it's not rather um, confident uh, very much if someone who's talking about uh, some sort of a software or investment, let's say uh, the tools that are helping money to invest, for instance, and he's uh, really very um, 
happy chappy, I would say, yes. I mean, to the, to the certain extent, it depends from the business you represent, whether you should be more enthusiastic and energetic versus uh, fact-based. That's right. Um, I see here another, uh, there, there were some comments in regards to tone. I'm not sure it meant me, like people can see me, but they cannot hear me. But I, I think it was before to uh, okay. to a colleague of ours okay. who, who were really very... Okay, uh, then there's one uh, question, how many slides should it be? Again, it should, a business pitch should not be, um, should not run longer than seven minutes. So you could say if you spend one minute per slide, you have seven slides. If there are slides that you um, do not need a minute for, then maybe you end up with nine. Yeah? So this is the kind of rational uh, usually. So something between seven to nine slides is an average. There are other presentations. For example, your, your colleague mentioned that he came up with drawings and uh, is talking over those um, the visual um, uh, inspirations, if you like. So maybe he has 20 drawings, but if you go through quickly, you might still end up with seven minutes and you had a very entertaining, very interesting uh, visual experience. So there, there's nothing written in stone, but I think you understand the, the rationale. Now, Piotr says, from what I understood, your investors have more modern, let's say, U.S. approach and expect vision and iterative effect evaluation rather than strict business plan fulfillment. Um, no, well, our investors do not have an U.S. approach, I think. They are all European. Um, the European investor tends to be probably a little bit more conservative, is certainly looking for disruptive business models and something innovative, but is not uh, looking for, uh, let's say, a visionary entrepreneur he or she falls in love with and that's cool, this is going to be such an incredible experience. That is not really what they're after. They want to see, uh, going back to your question, um, they want to see very clear business effects. They want to see absolutely that um, the, 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 the business plan um, is um, uh, communicating uh, realistic um, expectations, uh, realistic forecasts, uh, a realistic market assessment, and makes a real interesting offer. And yes, they want to see that, let's say, the, the, the defined milestones will be reached. They want to see that the promise is delivered and that um, uh, the company develops in the defined steps and, and or takes those defined steps. Um, if it is about do I have to do every bit and detail that I am mentioning in my business plan? No, because you can't. Because the minute you finish your business plan, as you know, it's invalid because the market has changed already. But it is about creating a strategy that is based on your business plan that um, uh, uh, you will further develop in due course with the investor that you obviously respect and that you use as, as a blueprint for um, making the proper steps. So I hope that um, answers that. Uh, and here's someone else who actually says, I cannot hear you for the last 10 minutes but my microphone is on and there seem to be people who actually can. That is crazy. I'm not sure why that is, to be honest, uh, because most people can hear me, it seems, but some seem to have a problem. So uh, the person with the address in Cater, Poland, should... And I will answer. Okay. I think uh, I, uh, you will all the time accept this 10 seconds. Uh, mm. We can hear you all very well. Okay. Yeah, it's strange because a couple of people have indicated 
in um, uh, around 5.30, 5.33, that they have problems hearing me. Very sorry for that. But there needs to be always some kind of technical problem. <laughs> it's never as, as, as uh, uh, easy as it should be. So let's see if we have more questions. What is the deadline to deliver the test presentation? Um, a very good question. Let's go back to the time, the schedule overview. So um, we are, obviously we will be in touch, which means Christoph will be in touch with you guys to follow up on today's webinar. So the idea is to do that within the next one to two weeks maximum. So uh, my, my assumption would be that um, by um, the, the, the next time that is indicated here, which is kind of tomorrow, so by uh, September 11th, we want to have seen your case studies and we want to see um, uh, which uh, uh, presentation we want to discuss and do that around the 10th, 11th of September. So let's see if we have another question. Um, where can I find the presentation to listen to the end? Okay, um, that's another question. We have recorded uh, the session and there will be a file that um, I will send to Christoph so that he can make it available to you. Obviously, you will receive the PowerPoint that is based, um, or that is the, the foundation for this webinar. So you receive that? Yeah, you can. You will receive that. We will uh, distribute it. But you can also, uh, uh, if you if you if you look at the last slide of our of the no media presentation, then you also have a link where all the files, presentations, and uh, recordings are uploaded. So uh, well, it's easy. Huh? No, not only from today's webinar, but from from the previous web, uh, from the future webinars and the previous webinars as well. Mm -hmm. So Francesco writes, hello all, I have a question too. For the investors to invest to a startup is really important, the team. What should we do if we are just <laughs> a one-person team? <laughs> Very good. Um, the question is uh, not untypical. Um, the one-man band, um, the one-man band is uh, often the beginning of, of a startup and there is no problem with that. Uh, it depends really on um, the, um, let's say, the steps that you need to take as uh, an entrepreneur. So if I'm making this up, uh, you can uh, maybe carry your, your venture um, alone for the next half year because there will be certain things that you will be able to do or only you will be able to do, then this is fair and fine. If by any chance, let's say in those six months, um, you need to do certain things and you need a programmer or you need a designer or you need someone else. Then you make sure that you say, we need to hire um, um, a programmer or we need to hire a designer in order to achieve this and this and that and that. For that, we need a mounting. So the team question, yes, is key. But depending on what you are doing, depending on the milestones uh, uh, for your company to, to take it further, then you will identify what you need when, and then obviously that is part of your investment offer, you know, of the definition of what you actually then will do with the money that you want to attract. Let's see if we have more here. I hope that answered your question. And here I have, it's strange that some people cannot hear me. Uh, wonderful, so I answered Francesco's question. Please type in more if you like. You didn't really have a lot of possibility to interact so far. <laughs> 
let's see if I missed a question. No, I think I have addressed everything. Yes, so I think if, if, yes, if, yes, I think if you have no more questions, uh, uh, we can hear you very poorly. You can hear me very poorly? No, 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 no. We can hear you very well, but uh, someone uh, was trying to ask a question, or is, or is it I hear my voice uh, as an echo? No, rather not. Well, if no one's typing the questions, no one's raising the questions, I do think that it was really extensive today. Uh, and what I would suggest to all of you, uh, please uh, think, uh, think, the, uh, think the material and, and, and the presentation over one more time. Please type your, put your questions in the email and, and send it to, to me and I will deliver it to, uh, to, uh, to Julien. Uh, so we'll distribute the presentation, also with the information where you can find the previous one and the future ones. And uh, and well, if you have questions more like technical ones, when and how we should prepare yourself, uh, then I say you should start as soon as possible. Yes, absolutely. Knowing the agenda, knowing the agenda that uh, those are rather the fixed dates, of course. If there could be a vis uh, uh, and so something can happen and we will postpone it, but nevertheless, those are the fixed dates of the webinar that we planned. Um, yes, and then and we are for your disposal, especially me. So uh, if, you, if, 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 if you want to ask questions, then please do it. And, and if you don't have it now, I would, I, I would, I would wish you then a very good <laughs> weekend. Uh, for some of us, uh, it will be an uh, interesting night, this Polish-German football match. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> Super! So, so uh, good luck! Good luck, yes. <laughs> good <laughs> luck. Uh, yes, and, and really, it was a pleasure for me as well to, to, to attend oh, this webinar. Thank, thank you, Julian, one more time. And pleasure. Please, if, if, if you don't have one more... Christoph, what's your email? I put my email um, once. Thank you, Benoit, as well, that she put it one more time. And it is on the last slide of the presentation that was uh, at the, uh, as the first one. Which you then also receive, I suppose, right? Of so course, yes. Sending both slides, um, both decks, so you have both our contacts at the very end of the presentations. And um, obviously, uh, some of you are um, in contact already. Yes, and maybe my request is because uh, I think that some of you could uh, have the information about the webinar via our partners in the in Twist pro project. So it's it's a question also to um, to you, Julian. Uh, do you know the addresses of those who attended today's webinar? Because uh, to some of you, I may not have a direct uh, email address. I, for example, I was sending an emails. Uh, uh, to to Lisen Labs, Yura Technologies, uh, uh, Meta Group, and and, and that's all. And, and and also maybe the, in that way the information about the webinar spread spread it. So uh, that would be useful if to some of you, if you could give us uh, uh, email, uh, feedback within the email, which means if you could email us, yes, then it will be easier to uh, to send the email back to you. Yeah, exactly, because we need we need to send the presentation to you and uh, the audio file. Maybe we have to create a Dropbox, um, so we need to share that information with you. Uh, if we do not have your contact details, obviously we cannot uh, proceed and we cannot establish uh, this, this kind of uh, digital working relationship. So I think the, the best procedure would be um, if you all email your contact details to Christoph. So yes. that the foundation is then creating a database for the people who will be um, attending uh, the webinars and so that we have your contact details. We can also include information about your company, so make sure that the websites are indicated and then we have a very nice starting point for, for beginning to work with each other. Excellent, yes, that is true. Very good. The ball uh, basically is in, in, in uh, the, the area of the participants, which are now down to 10. So maybe we have to um, send that email 
through all the channels that have been receiving information on this webinar so that everybody knows, okay, in order to access the presentation, in order to participate now in the interactive part of this training, I need to share my contact details with Christopher. Yeah, yeah, I, I do believe that you can also, if there was be, there would be some problems, if you receive information, for example, from uh, Meta Group, uh, EGU, our technologies, uh, then we will also distribute the content of, of today's course. webinar to them. So, uh, yeah. and then please, then please come back to us uh, within the email so we could build this database. Julian was talking about. Very yeah. Good. Yes, one more time, thank you. I think then, uh, uh, Julie, you have to say, you, 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 have to, you can say the last word as you're the organizer and you have the power to end up <laughs> this session. I uh, like that power. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah, was a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. I hope it was useful. Thank you very much for your uh, kind words, Christoph. And um, uh, I'll be looking forward to, to engaging uh, with all of you. And um, I think we can take this um, uh, further very effectively. And I'm curious to learn more about uh, all these 26 participants who I have not been meeting today in person. So have fun yeah. with uh, the, the match. And so yep. I think this is a great coincidence. So let's see. <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, Julian, only my question one. Uh, do you have uh, just like a few more minutes uh, after the webinar just to have a conversation or yes, we'll leave it for Monday morning? No, no, no. Yes, let's, so, do uh, it. let's do it now. And uh, everybody is um, now invited to leave uh, the, the meeting room. And um, we can stay on, Christoph, or we can okay. connect via okay. Skype, whatever. Or I can, yes, if, 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 you, if you're uh, online on Skype, then I can call you on Skype if, if it's okay with you. You have, so my, from, you have my Skype yes, address? Yes, I have. Yes, Very I have. Good. Mm -hmm. yes. So then I close officially the GoToMeeting room, <laughs> wish everybody yes. a pleasant uh, football game and a fantastic and sunny weekend, I hope. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. And Take care. You soon. Thank you. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you. Ciao. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye-bye.